Hello! In this video, you will learn about the LUTs, what LUTs are, what types of LUTs exist, and where they are used. In the film industry, color correction with LUTs has been known for a long time. Recently, however, LUTs have been used widely outside of professional studios. Today, transforming one color range to another using LUTs is used not only for grading video, but also for photo editing, visual effects and computer graphics, as well as monitor calibration and streaming video processing hardware. Yes, all modern graphics cards have LUT hardware support. So, what is the LUT? LUT, or lookup table, is a table where the input value of the function corresponds to a certain result on the output. Computational operations of the function are replaced by the search operation. The simplest example is a multiplication table. When multiplying in our heads, we do not actually count. We take the desired result from our memory. There are many lookup tables with far more complicated functions than multiplication. For example, a table of natural logarithms. Scientists widely used them before computers because such tables greatly reduced manual calculations. Such tables with pre-computed values of the functions are still used today. This approach to complex calculations saves significant computing resources. Let's return to the graphics LUTs. They could be one-dimensional or three-dimensional. Let's consider a one-dimensional LUT. First, let me remind you how the color is coded in the RGB color space. For each channel, the darkest value corresponds to zero and the brightest equals 255, so we get 256 levels for each color channel, or 2 to the 8th power. This is why we call it 8-bit color. Thus, the one-dimensional LUT has independent lookup tables for each color channel of the image. In fact, a one-dimensional LUT consists of three one-dimensional LUTs, one for each of the three color components, R, G, or B. Here is an example of a table for a one-dimensional LUT where the input color value is replaced by another output value. Let me show how it works in the following example. We have RGB color input values of 5, 253, and 1. According to this table, the output color value will be 2, 252, 7, and so on for other colors. The main feature of one-dimensional LUT is the independence of each color channel from the other two. Thus, changing the input values for the red channel we will not influence the other channels. We can perform such operations with the image when working with R, G, and B curves. By using one-dimensional LUT, you can change the image gamma, white balance, contrast, and move the black point and the white point. But you cannot use them for complex operations, such as changing the color saturation. Also, curves cannot replace the channel mixer when we add the information from one channel to another. For such complex color correction, you should use three-dimensional LUTs or 3D LUTs. To understand what a 3D LUT is, I represent the RGB color space in the form of a three-dimensional data array. Three color components, R, G, and B, form a three-dimensional coordinate system where all RGB colors are located. The size of 3D LUT is determined by the number of points for each of the axes of the three-dimensional cube. Let's save 3D LUT as it is with size 8 and 3DL format. I open the file in Notepad and look what's inside. First, we can see that the color is coded with 12 bits because we have 4096 levels of brightness per channel. The LUT size equals 8, so the brightness range is divided into 8 parts. That is, we have 8 reference points per channel. Let's try to visualize this LUT in three-dimensional space. The larger the LUT size, the more reference points it has and the more accurate color correction can be recorded. If the size of the LUT is too small, then your color correction will likely fall between the reference points and simply will not be written to the LUT file. But do not go to extremes. If we have a LUT in which each point corresponds to the same level of brightness, then for 12-bit color, we would receive almost 68 billion values. And this huge table would be used for calculations of each color pixel of the image. Even with today's fast computers, the loading of such LUTs to graphics editors is inhumane. Usually, the LUT with size 64 is more than enough. 
Now let's make a LUT that reduces the saturation. Here's how it looks in three-dimensional space. After the application of the 3D LUT that is created in the 3D LUT creator, the color space is rebuilt. As the colors of any image take a specific place in a color space, after it is distorted, the colors of the image also change. Just as water always takes the form of the vessel, the color of the image takes the form of the LUT. There are two methods of storing the LUTs, text and graphical. You have already met the 3DL format. There is also the cube format, where the color coding accuracy equals 20 bits. Why use such precision, you might ask? 99% of monitors display 8-bit color. The fact is that when you apply to the image many corrections at the same time, the error of the final color conversion is stored and you may get banding on smooth gradients. Therefore, it is better to use cube format. By the way, this format is supported by a large number of editors. Also, 3D LUT Creator can save LUTs in the CSP, CMS, and LUT formats. Graphical LUTs are usually stored as PNG files. They are images that contain all reference color points. LUTs for the game engine Unity are stored in this format. Here are LUTs with sizes 16 and 32, and the LUTs for the Unity plugin amplify color. Also, 3D LUT Creator saves LUTs in GPU image format. Here are LUTs with sizes 25 and 64. The greatest LUT advantage is its huge versatility. All presets for photo and video editors depend on working tools and can be used only in the programs where they were created. LUTs work directly with the color, and they don't depend on the size of the file they are applied to. LUTs that are created in 3D LUT Creator can be imported to a large number of applications for working with photos, video, compositing, and even in the environment for game development. Some applications support LUTs directly, and some need third-party plugins. However, more and more editors are starting to support LUTs and eventually, I'm sure they will even be loaded onto amateur cameras as color presets. That's all. I hope this video was useful for you. Put likes and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.